when I think of live fire and I think of quadrant, and I think of all the highlight reels that we saw SLG and, and the boy chick, chick, the overkills that both those two were, were creating at Kansas city was something special to watch. So if you want to talk about keys to victory for both these two teams, if I am a send, I do not want chick or SLG with that sniper rifle on hand. You got to prioritize the power ups, power weapons. I know it's almost like beating a dead horse at this point that that needs to be said, but I mean, We've seen the damage that those two can do when they are on point and they have that opportunity to go off. So if you're a sin, you want to get that snipe into your own hands. And honestly, with what Respectful has done with the power weapons over the last two pro series that we've been able to witness, I mean, it would be a great idea to try and get him going by getting him some of that power as well. It's an interesting thing that you raise. And I have a question for you. You have the likes of Chick and SLG and Respectful and, and indeed you've got snipe drone these players who can pop off a snipe wife at any time and during your career was there any of these players that you recognize that you played against that you had to shut down nice and early because if they got open ahead of steam they could be a real problem in the series yeah all the time i think every single series i went into i was kind of like focused on how do i shut this guy down if i can shut this guy down and, and stop him from getting the power of weapons we're going to give ourselves a, so much better of an opportunity players like snipe down really come to mind where it's like yeah, he's going to get the first one on there as a pit. It's going to be really difficult to stop him from getting that first one. But can I make his life a living hell from there on out, right? Can I stop? Yeah. Can when snipe is coming up, I don't want my snipe. I want his snipe. I, I want to kill him and at least let T-Square get it off my dead body or something, right? Like we're in a much better situation if T-Square has snipe than if snipe down does. And no shade to T2, but I think we all know how dangerous snipe down is. So I don't think he would find shade in there. <laughs> Well, one thing we're going to find out very shortly is if Ascend are still the top dogs in Europe or have Quadrant just ever so slightly taking the lead in that regard. And as we head into Valencia, all these questions will soon be asked once more. And who can do what on land? Will Ascend be finally able to get their hands on a European Championship or will the old question mark still remain? But here we go under the eyes and ears of Respectful as we get off to a hot start with two members going down a piece and nobody really able to put any sort of strategy down just yet. Snipe Rifle still oh. up and ready to be grabbed. SLG whisks it away. Can he find a face? No, he can't, but Slays have gone in the favor of a stand this time and they've also got ball right where they need it. You can already tell the prioritization on that snipe was so high from everyone in the lobby. Look at that, another double forced before being able to pick up the snipe for Respectful. Four players Respectful had to fight to try and get that sniper rifle into his hands. He eventually gets it done, but the prioritization on how important, how impactful this snipe can be, you already see it in how the players have decided to break this map. SLG has just snuck under the nest bridge as he got eyes for the ball carrier instead. Respectful will even the odds here to straight 3v3 in the map as ball has gone down. Chick ensures Respectful joins the rest of his teammates, but Steek is milking that ball for all it's worth as he gives it a toss and Gets it off the map for the reset. 27 seconds here. The advantage for Ascend now with three members of Quadrant in the respawn screen. So although it's been pure chaos on the point of views that we've been watching, the battle for this snipe control, it's been 28 seconds accumulated for Ascend. So in the meantime, as these kills have gone back and forth, the snipe really hadn't been found to be too successful. That ball time from Ascend is worth its money right now. 35 seconds unanswered and Somehow, some way, Snipe Drone can't hit the shot, but does stay alive with a nice little movement difference with that repulsor combination. And because he was able to buy so much time, it should allow Legend to pick up an easy kill here back. Pillars, maybe a one bullet in the Snipe, and we'll see if he can put it to use. And Legend then, for many people, the best player in Europe. Certainly has been the most consistent throughout time here. He has lost his long-standing duo in Shady. Things didn't go the way perhaps they would have liked Subsequently, that's why they've made this change and Snipe Drone gets a kill here to help even the odds for his team to go down once more. 35 second advantage about to be increased even further and seek it. Not only did he get to scoop that overshield up, but it's going to be a late pop into the chest as well. But unfortunately for him, he gets a grenade in the mouth and that will take away some of that overshield, but he will save his teeth for the meantime. But two members go down for Quadrant. That's going to amount to more points, even more as all the slay is going in the right direction if you're wearing purple. Yeah, the slay differential between these two right now is heavily in favor of a sin right now. Snipe Drone, Respectful, and Legend all with six. They could just right behind him with five. He's got 27 seconds of ball time, so maybe a little bit less opportunity to pick up the kills, but everything going right for a sin right now. They're starting to capitalize on all of the power that's on the map. 
They predominantly won the battle for Snipe. They got that second overshield, and with it, they were able to accumulate another 30 seconds of ball time because they got a full clean wipe of slays. Snipe drone has only registered one death as it things stand, and Legend on his seventh already is doing a great job of staying alive is Snipe Drone while the rest of his teammates slay around him and ensure that he can get as much ball time and 38 is what he's worked up this time but it's SLG gets a kill with the way the Snipe Rifle and all of a sudden it's the first time we're going to see a Quadrant set up but how long will it last here? It's now or never for SLG and unfortunately can't quite hit the no scope fortunately that player that takes him down is removed from the map but when SLG is missing Snipes usually bad things happen for Quadrant you have to think fortunately they do have Chick with this heat wave. He's able to pick up a kill, some ball time. He even gets the play before a couple of plays even go in Quadrant's favor. So although they play the ball, they actually win the battle. And with Overshield coming up in 10 seconds, I know it's a 60-point lead, Jersey, but this game could get really interesting if they're able to just weather a couple of pushes from a sin. Yurix pops the shield, gets one, Legend will fall, but unfortunately two members have gone down and that overshield that Wes rightly speaks about has been picked up and it's in an Ascend member's chest and although things were looking good for Quadrant, they're going from bad to ugly now as overshield will definitely play a factor here and it's going to be even more time respectful, has it in his chest, he's got just under half to work with here as he gets two. He's getting tagged up all of the way and unfortunately gets one more player down to no shields but the damage was done Wes, 80 seconds on the clock. They're respectful fighting an entire army of Quadrant members there. It gets two, makes the third player to no shield, and the damage has been done. That overshield allows them to accumulate so much ball time. Now just needing five seconds before this first round is over. And they're going to get the five as a stand draw. First blood, round one will go in their favor. One round away from securing game one, and the pressure starting to be cranked. The heat in the kitchen is very, very hot here for Quadrant as we jump into round two. Round two kicking off, and let's see if the same prioritization is on this sniper rifle. And I mean, respectful, it's just there. Hits the slide, hits the no scope, or the quick scope on the body. Can't quite finish that player in a 2v2 situation. Now Quadrant somehow able to weather the storm after respectful gets that first pick. And now it's just a one-on-one -on -one and overshield coming up in four seconds is gonna be all about positioning from respawners right now and Shad trying to make his way there, but there's just too many members to try and deal with. This overshield still wipe for the pick and then Shad's gonna be the first one to step up and pick it up. He gets there on the second time of asking and the overshield will go into the chest. No time on the board for either team here, but Quadrant have got the man advantage and that is why they're starting to bring the ball back tower. Snipe drone though will use that plasma pistol to great effect and completely evaporate the shields and get that player down to one shot. Great work out of Snipe drone. Yeah, if you can ever pretty much go one for one as a team against an overshield player, especially at the most recent buff with the update, that's a massive win in your favor. So Snipe Drone doing everything right there to remove that overshield from the equation of this quadrant setup. Only 20 points have been allotted, but a much different story here in round two, at least as far as the early game goes compared to round one. So quadrant really starting to step it up and make this one a series. That's exactly what the doctor ordered here. As SLG registers one and somehow slips away from Seek It. But here comes the Heat Wave. That's going to do the damage and lock in that kill. And the assist will come through. But the Heat Wave was only good for one as the ball starts to rotate now. Shad expertly brings it towards green. Now they have the possibility and the opportunity to play ball if they do so require. Respectful will put Nurix in the ground. That will mean this play ball might have to come quicker than first anticipated. Shad gives it a toss opts to try and stay alive but it won't be for long numbers advantage now for a send but only for a short while as late legend now the last man standing a good trade from chad there as he plays the ball he's able to get a two-shot melee actually the ball doesn't get played it actually stays out bottom green and because of it now quadrant able to get a few seconds of their own so if chad doesn't get that kill as soon as he drops the ball we're probably looking at a completely different storyline, but that kill could be massive for their opportunity to continue to extend this lead now in round two, 44 seconds and counting. And they've got themselves this overshield to play around as well to just deny some of the pressure that a sim would be able to have on this setup. And all of a sudden round two is starting to look like a blowout in Quadrant's favor. So if this can close out, the second half of this round two goes the same way as the first. 
bit of it. We're going to be looking at two different blowout rounds, one from a sim, one from Quadrant, and Jersey, that's something I love to see as we get this winner's finals underway here in game one, because we're looking at a banger of a series with the fact that these two teams, they've come to play. Both so evenly matched. Once they get control, they very rarely relinquish it, and that is exactly what we're seeing with Quadrant. Those overshields have really helped the cause to put significant scoring on the board. They've gotten too unanswered, as it, respectful with the sniper rifle, unable to find the body, let alone the face. But Secret, last man standing, that's going to mean more ball time now for Nurex and Cozy. Brings it back towards green as they start to touch over now the 70 point threshold. You got to call out Shad 20 kills right now. I know he has one assist, but Shad, just the new guy on this team, Fragger, he was replaced. After Kansas City, and you wondered if Shad was really going to be the right pickup. Shad making his name, his play style, very comfortable here on this quadrant roster as they look to go back to back in these pro series. They're going to need a big performance from him if they want to take down a team like Ascend, and he's given them that here in at least the first two rounds of Odd Ball. 79 seconds and Overshield about to pop, and this is the first time Ascend have really looked like getting their hands on it, but the plasma grenade will do the damage from Chick. To stop that push. Nurex playing a little bit more defensively, not opting to go for the overshield just yet, and maybe allowing a teammate to pick it up instead. There it is. SLG whisks it up, and with the sniper rifle in the back pocket as well, perhaps not the best ingredient to have is the sniper rifle and overshield in the same player's chest, but SLG making it work. Overshield has gone, though, and they haven't gotten any more points on the board just yet as the ball still remains on its stand. SLG doing everything he can. Can't hit the headshot, but is the body enough to subside some of the push? The answer is no. Quadrant's lost too many members. It's going to be a sin finally getting some ball time here in round two. Legend trying to get that to top tower two and snipes around. Oh no, this could be all that it's been need, but beautiful nade from SLG to remove him from the map. And it looks like a sin setup is going to be shortly lived. Unfortunately, it does look like something wrong technically has happened i don't believe this is a known strategy from the quadrant members as they begin dancing in circles around the tower a player must have dropped out on one of the sides we'll figure out what the exact ruling he is here of round two but and who could really bet against them going the distance to another bracket reset in grand finals once more these two have well and truly been the top dogs in european halo for a considerable amount of time now Ever since Kansas City, both these teams placing top eight but how they would like to best one another here and indeed Valencia and the future to come. Questions will continue to be asked. Which one can close the gap? Which one will be that little bit more successful? Which one's hotter in form? But we're about to find out who can win here in this winner's finals. The score currently sits Ascend 1-0 up. But in this round two, Quadrant only require 40 seconds to tie us here. A whirlwind from Respectful is going to give Shad the early advantage. They find the kill on the stick as well. And already Quadrant picking up where they left off in round three. SLG finds the third. And it's all four dead for a sin. All four alive for Quadrant. A perfect start to the game if you're Quadrant. Now, can you secure this overshield? And almost guarantee you 20 points of oddball, making it just 20 points needed. I mean, this is exactly how Quadrant needed to come out to make sure round three is seen. They've already gotten to the halfway point that they required uh, to win round two. The overshield, though, has gone the wrong way. It's in Respectful's chest along with the heat wave, but expert play from SLG milking that ball for every second that it was worth. They only need 12 now to tie up this round. 12 seconds is not going to be a lot of time, obviously, so still in a great spot. You want to see Quadrant be able to secure that overshield. However, they did everything right outside of setup for that overshield and successfully secure it. And now it's in with this ball in hand, it's going to have an opportunity to maybe play some perfect Taylor as the cliche goes, but we'll see if they're capable of it. They get the first kill, but unfortunately it's sprayed it out. The ball is still bottom middle, which is a beautiful thing for Quadrant to be able to see is that even though it's in with like they had momentary control, they couldn't get a setup. And because of that, Quadrant are able to keep this a little bit of scrappy for now. And look at that. They've already got the ball ran away towards scoreboard and now just nine points needed. Reminder as well, Ascend need all 100 seconds, so 90 more to secure round two. It's a tough ask, and specifically with how Quadrant have been playing, milking that ball, but they have got their hands on it now. It has to be a perfect setup from here on out. The first pick's gone in a Quadrant's 
favor and respectful is the first one to fall Sika tries desperately to rotate the ball but unfortunately headed off at the pass two players exit out towards rat tunnel indeed that key door area they only need five more seconds and they will tie this one up sniper rifle in the chest or in the hands of nurex but he's not even gonna need to fire a single shot they will tie up the round and we will come back when this game this lobby gets reset wes but it's one one we're all tied up and like you said Quadrant had exactly what they needed. They had the start that they needed, and they made uh, made a send pay for it. Yeah, Quadrant doing everything to get the job done there. But um, what I want to see from them is to be able to transition that four dead at the very start. All of the power, the heat wave, the snipe going into their hands. I want to see them be able to set up for that overshield and successfully secure that. There's no reason that they did not get that overshield. And as we we're on board with the ball carrier. He went towards the tower. Didn't really help his team secure that overshield. And then we hop on board with uh, Respectful, and all of a sudden he's got a heat wave and overshield in hand. So something had to have gone wrong there for them not to secure that overshield. Quadrant is going to need to clean up those kind of things if they want to find themselves playing at a higher level, being more consistent, being more dominant. Maybe not in the EU scene specifically, but when you come to Orlando and you play against the likes of, of the EU United, the Sentinels, in order to win those series, you're going to have to transition your perfect play into like perfect games in a sense. You need to like be able to not just have this one glimpse of a shiny moment. You have to consistently play at that high level and securing that overshoot is a must against some of the world's best. So we'll see if they do a better job here and there. It's just a small blunder that we're able to point out. But round three kicking off and Legend on screen trying to make his way towards Snipe. And unfortunately, he's gone down and so is Sika as well. It's next round wins then. As Quadrant runs through the first seconds on the board. Respectful with the snipe rifle. Finds one to the body and the second one will find the face. But who has managed to pick up that overshield? It's going to be a question that we ask time and time again. Chick with the heat wave in his hand. Not going to be able to take down Seeket as he gives him the wiggles this time. Two down now for Quadrant, but the ball has made its way over towards C. Platt. But anybody in position, it's going to be Nurex who has that overshield. They've ironed out those initial problems that they have, but unfortunately, only able to be good for one is the overshield, but that might that one kill might be good enough. Absolutely. One's enough, man. You're able to create a numbers advantage and an, a numbers advantage in Halo Infinite to give you every opportunity to jump out to a lead. Unfortunately, they aren't able to turn that one kill into multiple being dead. That's a great job by Legend with this snipe and heat wave to trade out a few kills of his own. Can't quite hit that shot onto the player top scoreboard, but you wanted to see Quadrant use that overshield to get that first kill and then turn that first kill into three dead. But now you're looking at three dead for Quadrant and Ascend to bringing that ball towards tower as well. What can Legend do with the snipe then? Fire is one shot off and you can hear the heat wave in the background as well. Ringing out, but unfortunately two members of Ascend go down. Setup has been well and truly broke open here. Snipe drone desperately tries to hold whatever semblance of control they have left. He's done a successful job, but respectful who was the last man standing over towards Dirk, but unfortunately with that play ball, has just handed the initiative over the Quadrant. And look at that. It was Nurex that was the last player alive for Quadrant, but somehow he's gotten away with ball. He's brought it all the way to house, and they get a few kills. So somehow, some way, Nurex playing some scrappy objective here is going to give his team an opportunity. If they can secure this overshield, that would be massive to get some significant ball time. But unfortunately, oh, oh wow. Respectful goes down right before he's able to punch it. And look at that quadrant. They're going to try and overextend for it. But unfortunately, they all get gunned down. And they're going to be able to secure this overshield. Nurex going to rotate that ball towards green as well. So no harm, no foul there. But as Slays get traded back and forward, the batter for power up is concerned. This entire time, Nurex has been holding onto the ball. And now he's giving quadrant a lead. Oh, an SLG right behind the overshield player. You can see him. The communication came. I'm going to bait you. And the overshield player did not clear his corners. And SLG will put one well-placed elbow to the spine of Snipe Drone. That will mean the overshield that was going to tip the balance of this game was not as effective as possibly first anticipated. And that is why we're now seeing the score start to close the gap. But the damage has already been done. Fantastic play out of Nurex. The latest addition back on the squad after originally losing his position to Shad, but now replacing Fragger. Fantastic performance out of him to recognize the position that they were in, rotate the ball green and play it accordingly. But now we're seeing the score currently sitting one round apiece. And there's no wonder why this these two teams are so evenly matched. We're seeing that right here, right now. Legend once again with Heat Wave and Snipe in hand. Let's see what he can do. He finds one, he finds two. Just absolutely prized two of them. 
Hands the ball over to his teammate. Now three dev for Quadrant. Ascend have a complete house set up and we'll see what they're able to do now. Oh, oh. a legend. Finds the face of Shad and his former compatriot. That's going to be two dead now. And Yurik's also in the respawn screen. And Legend is absolutely lighting Quadrant up here. He's firing on all cylinders. Legend still going. Finds another one. Stalls the push once again. And Quadrant are consistently keeping two dead. And with Overstill coming up, Legend could potentially just be creating such a large opening for Sin to secure this Overshield. He does get traded out, but Overshield, it's been secured. This ball has been in hand the entire time. And now Sin has over 30 points in the lead. So you can try to put that over shield to use with the help of respectful. They secure one, but two members down a piece now. But about a quarter of over shield left. Will it be able to just tip the balance in this next fight? Unfortunately, it's going to be a trade once more. Snipe Drone is back house one shot, but they have not been able to clear him out just yet. Eventually they do. SLG will clear house. But he will also lose his life in the process. It is scrappy. It is back and forth. Both teams going tit for tap, but unfortunately, the scales still sit in the favor of Ascent. I want everybody to pay attention to what Sniper just did there. Hiding behind that pillar, plays his life as long as he can, and then he gets a melee before getting taken down. Yes, he doesn't secure a kill. It looks average as hell. But what he does do is he makes it very easy for his teammate to throw a grenade towards that ball carrier, able to deny about 20 seconds of time from Quadrant just because he stayed alive and got a melee off. That's a beautiful play by Sniper Shad's gonna rotate that ball once more, recognizing his team are down in numbers. Throws it out into the open field just below the overshield, recognizing that he just needs to put the ball in a precarious position and use it as bait. But unfortunately, Ascend have spotted that out and they've spotted him out. They smell the rat in the tunnel and down he goes fall. 76 now seconds and climbing to Quadrant's 44. They need to stop this, put this points tally and do it quickly or they will go down in game one. Legend still has that ball in-house window. The push is going to come once more, but will it be standing strong? Can seek it with the heat wave, do the damage required to ensure his teammate with the ball can do more. Legend picks up one. Shad's going to fall here. Repulsor play will be used, but will he be able to get away? Yes, he will. But Snipe Drone with the remote detonation in the feed will do the damage required. It's a brawl again. It's a slobber knocker, but it's then they're still on top with Chick last man alive. Another overshield for Snipe Drone. Another overshield for Snipe Drone, and he's going to be able to deny any sort of push Quadrant would come up with. It's four points is all they need, and the Ascend are going to take game one here in our winner's finals. If you wondered if Ascend was going to be back in the front runner position in the championship seat, game one tells you anything that they are here to play in Quadrant. They've got to come up with answers if they want to repeat the same performance they had in their Pro Series last week. Well, we asked the question, are Quadrant just the interim champions? Well, the top dogs have come back and they've bit first in game one here, Wes. It took us a while to get there, but eventually both these teams were giving as good as they got, but Ascend really hit that extra gear. They found that stride towards the latter stages of that last round. Yeah, Ascend looked great in that last round and everything going right in their favor. They were getting the slays, they were hitting the shots. And I mean, on the back of Legend, just with the Legend. snipe and the heat wave, just absolutely going off. Plays like that, it just means so much to teams, especially in Infinite, when you're able to just take down a quick kill, give your team numbers advantage, but when you can do it multiple times in a row to just continue to stagger the potential push from the enemy team. I mean, Legend just created so much space and opportunity for this Ascend team. And this is something that we saw him doing as of last week yet on this same exact map, Legend. He's starting to make a name for himself with these power weapons. One of the best in the European scene, potentially the best in the European scene, and he's showing you exactly why. This is Send roster showing no signs of a hangover after Shady left with the introduction of Respectful. Getting off to a hot start in this winner's finals, taking down Quadrant in game number one. But now, Wes, Slayer Aquarius is our game number two. With what we've seen, what way do you see it going? Slayer Aquarius is one of these map mode combos that I feel like it's a very small map. It's a very fast placed game type, similar to like a streets. I really think the team that plays at a quicker pace usually benefits from, from this map mode combo. And I think that in my head, 
I have to lean towards the spin once again. But Quadrant, they need to come out swinging. We've seen them have success actually on Aquarius Slayer. Or, yeah, Aquarius Slayer. And they're going to need that now more than ever because you do not want to go down 2 0 to a spin. You have to figure out a way to show that you're here to play, right? And although that round two and odd ball really went in your favor and things were looking good going into round three, momentum has been lost. So you got to figure out something to light the spark. And it's got to be an, indiv an individual player that steps up. It's got to be prioritization of the heat wave, the camo from these guys, because we saw the damage legend was able to do in that round three with that heat wave, with the power ups in the sense favor. So you want to shut down those storylines and give yourselves those opportunity to have success. Now, something that we can talk about, particularly with Quadrant, Wes, is that last week, yes, they were the champions. They got the job done. As we look now at the bracket and or indeed the series layout of what's to expect to come next with Slayer Aquarius, something we did see was Quadrant won the tournament. Yes, that's what it will say on paper. That's the official line, but they did it the hard way. They got the, the, re, the bracket got reset after a 3 0 from Online Warriors. So they they there's still some holes in their game. There's still some things to iron out and things to work on. The send, they will ask those questions. They will pose those and really impose their will on you. So it's for Quadrant here to really bounce back in game two. Yeah, Quadrant is still trying to showcase that they have what it takes to be to call themselves the best in Europe, to win Valencia, right? Because that in the end goal, that's what you want. That's your next big step. These pro series are great, but they really are just an implication of what's going to happen on the biggest stage, which will be that Valencia event. Quadrant want to prove to themselves and to the world that they can beat Ascend. That's the team that they're more than likely going to have to play in the finals, and we'll see if they can continue to try and compete at the level that Ascend is going to bring to them, because right now they haven't looked as strong in these Ascend series, and we're jumping in the game two in Quadrant, having a perfect start once again, and that perfect start can really start to benefit you as far as getting off on the right foot and regaining a little bit of momentum in the series, Chad with camo as well. So all things going right for Quadrant here in game two. The foundation in game two then has been set and starting to cement. And Quadrant starting to reap the rewards. With a five kill advantage. Chad with the camouflage though will have to back down here. He's in big trouble of losing his life to Sika, who's just stood into the generator and he will ultimately get taken down. That's going to be two down now for Ascend with Legend. Potentially going to be the third victim. He's managed to get a trade and managed to get away and escape with his life for now. Oh, Sizzle Sticks will go in and tag Legend up, but there's two members of Ascend back base waiting for Chick to step out of line. Here they come. Will he be able to get a trade? Yes, indeed, he will. Ten kills, make it 11 now. The six quadrant remain in the front. Quadrant in the front, but maybe not for long because Snipe Throne lands some great shots there. You wanted to see some of that damage from the Dynamo Grenade capitalized on after Chick did so much damage there. And SLG, he picks up one. Make it a second for Quadrant as they extend the lead back to seven. But I like the pace that Quadrant is playing at right now. They're not typically the fastest paced team, I think in the European scene, but this is a very fast pace for them so far here in game two, and it's starting to benefit them immensely with the score. Sika off to a rough start here in our game number two, as he just hits the respawn screen again, currently sitting at zero and six with three assists. So it's never a recipe for success when you see a teammate falling as he is here right now. Legend of 1v1, nice that thruster Shad. pack will help Shad lock in a killing spree for his team. A second successful camouflage now for Quadrant as they really start to apply the pressure. 21 kills to nine. It's a different team in game two. Absolutely. Great route by Nurex there too to just relocate with camo very quickly and then find yourself a nice assist. Just continuing to push your advantage to apply pressure to the enemy team. And I like this as well, but is he going to overextend here is the question. He finds Sticker, gets him to no shield. Can't quite actually does land the kill on the stick. So a beautiful job by him to get a player no shield, find another as a kill. And Yurik's having a great performance here at eight, two, and three. It's a long road back for a stand here. Respectful try as he might though, to drag his team right back into this. As he soars out once more, lands the melee. We'll trade out this time though. With 29 kills to 14, Quadrant only requiring 21 more kills to tie up this series. Ascend have it all to do. 
And it looks as though they're prioritizing staying over towards the car side of the map here as the resources are well and truly on that side. With Seeker the only player playing the peace side here and Quadrant have sniffed out two players. They've locked in the kill of one. Respectful front base. Easiest kill. A chick's going to pick up with a fresh four shot. But they're firing all the cylinders here, Quadrant. Absolutely. Already with 32 on the board. Just 18 is all they need. A Sin going to have to figure out a way to completely flip this storyline on its head if they want to compete here in game two. But Quadrant are doing everything right to tie this series up at one to one. Camouflage going to pop very shortly. It's been the Quadrant story so far. Ascend need them now more than ever. As it does just pop up, Legend steps out, but SLG making sure if he's going to get it, it's going to be a tougher ask than he maybe was ready for. 36 kills now to 24. As Respectful locks in a double kill, and they need a lot more of that. It's now a 10 kill game. Camouflage still up for grabs. Legend will try the second attempt now to pick it up, but again, facing a little bit of competition from it. And has to back down car one. Camouflage has been picked up, but who has it gone to? I do believe it went into Quadrant's hands momentarily, but I believe that player was taken down. So Camo not going to be a benefactor to either team right now, but and all honestly, when it gets burned and the lead is heavily in favor of one of the team's jersey, that usually means that it's just a win condition removed from the team that needs to come back, that needs that level of power in order to create opportunity for additional kills. And right now, respectful, he's surrounded. Fortunately, he does have the heat wave, so he's able to find one, but can he stay alive is the big question. Still down 10 kills. It would be a monumental comeback for us in at this point. Quadrant not interested in leaving too many opportunities out there. And that is why they're putting so much emphasis on the camouflage and they will trade all the live long day here to success and to victory. Shadow over towards Car will get a couple of shots to the hands of Respectful, but SLG also sitting top middle. It's baiting and switching to the extreme here from a stand, but they haven't been able to register a kill after all these shots have been fired. Both teams doing an expert job of putting down damage, but also staying alive as Snipe Drone slides away with his life. For now though, Quadrant only require four more. Make it two more. As Shad locks in a double kill for himself and indeed his team. And immediately turns his attentions over towards Car One. Spots out Seek it. Puts him to half shields. Will relay that information to his team. And they're on hand to lock in the kills that they need. 1-1. One, one. We have a series in our hands here, Wes. We do, we do. Welcome back, Quadrant. If you thought this series was gonna go quickly in the Sin's favor after that round three, that was uh Kind of a blowout yeah. in, the, in game one. You thought wrong, Quadrant answered back in what I would think was a very strong opportunity for us to take a 2-0 lead. So you love to see that. Just as a fan of Halo, as a fan of competition here, you want this series to go the distance. You want the storyline to be Quadrant and Ascend are going to be battling for this throne. It's not just going to be given to either one. Respect for the new boy on a, on a spin. He's doing everything he can to get his team that 2 0 but it just wasn't enough. The rest of the team going to need to pick it up because Quadrant looked to gain momentum in the series after that 1-1 victory. And what we've seen in the round three of game one, Wes, was Legend really pushing the pace of the game and it was really off it. all of the good stuff that he was doing that Ascend seemed great success. But in game two, Quadrant done a great job of shutting him down. He's only successful in five, five of his gun engagements. Five and ten, he went with five assists. And that is not what you need from what you would anticipate going into the series is going to be your main slayer. Yeah, I mean, just look at the start that Quadrant had of this game too, and I think that that's where you'll learn how these games are going to go very quickly. At the start of game two, it was a nine to two lead from Quadrant, basically a perfect break, a perfect starting strat, and everyone executed correctly. When you gain that level of a lead, when you gain that kind of momentum, you just set yourself up for so much map control, presence just a uh, power right and i think that that's something very similar that we saw to the start of round two in all ball where we saw quadrant really take off they got what a fresh four dead they were able to get the snipe the heat wave the overshield secure about 40 seconds unanswered and and from that it was the quadrant show there in that second round of odd ball so if we've learned anything in these first two games, pay very close attention to the very start of the game for this quadrant team, because if they can get out and gain momentum, 
they seem to have had a hard time regaining that momentum throughout the first two games at least but when ascend has started strong or at least it's been an even keel start to those round those oddball rounds ascend has looked very very strong from then on out now what we do have now in coming up in game number three is king of the hill streets wes and you spoke about how quick quadrant were starting to play in that aquarius game and it was quicker than maybe you anticipated them playing based on their history as we now head into this king of the hill does that put them in good stead against ascend here Ascend has always been a very strong streets team. I think Respectful has done nothing but impress me in all of their streets gameplay that we've seen from him. So I would expect another strong performance from the boys on the purple side here. But we'll see how the start goes because I do think that it is a crucial start for Quadrant. And I already love SLG's aggressiveness. He's got so much damage on the two players, not even looking at him, not even expecting him to be here. And because of that, they should be able to win this early break and secure some rockets. SLG strolls across front C and is able to do it for free. That is criminal on the side of a stand, not picking him up specifically after him doing so much damage behind them. But Snipe Drone, despite that impressive start from Quadrant, has got the rockets. The early scoring oh my. has gone the way of a stand and somehow a Snipe Drone tucked away in this corner with his head between his legs. It's been able to stay alive and evade the attentions of those frag grenades. At least they haven't been able to get the job done in securing the kill onto him. But he's able to fire those two rockets, get two kills. But it's going to be all even here. Spawn point is going to be so important. SLG in a 1v1 with Snipe Drone who fancies it. Gets shut down though by the Frenchman. And that will mean some scoring here for Quadrant to get into the hill. But the final two remaining members of Ascend making it a really tough task. Great job by Ascend to come off respawn, compete for the tail. They've gained momentary control, but Quadrant is going to be pushing from several different angles, especially this downhill one. You got to deal with these guys first, and Chick doing a good job to stay alive. And Red able to trade with Sika, and should never be trading in those situations. It's three dead for Ascend, and Quadrant somehow, some way, have broken the setup from Ascend, and it's a beautiful job by them. They should be able to acquire some time and catch up to this early lead that Ascend has got. Set up in place then. All the players positioned where they would like them. First kill has gone their way. Sika has fallen. Bulldog sitting in the hill. Has his attention turned over towards tires, but the distance is not going to be enough. The pack of punch that's required. Snipe draw will shut down Yurix, who wasn't able to close the distance. Didn't even try to. Chick picks up two. Looking to make it three as Legend fires one rocket towards bottom middle, just trying to fire them as quick as he could, but they are going to drop down. And now one more rocket to play with for SLG and Co. As he looks to apply the pressure over towards Tower Sika, take it down to no shield. Seek SLG will finally lock that one in for his team. But they have not only closed the gap here, Quadrant here, Wes, they're starting to take the lead. Yeah, they're in a prime position to score this first point. That would be a massive opportunity for Quadrant right now. We've seen what they've done with early leads. They've transitioned it into game wins so far, into round wins in this series so it's a beautiful job by them if they can secure this first point what that means for their future Nurex with another double is gonna potentially set a sin on the back feet here as he looks to be aggressive and if they can stagger the respawns here they can almost guarantee themselves the first point it's been an absolute bloodbath up here at arcade a quadrant just about getting the better of it the early knockings of this game and the first hill will go towards Quadrant. They will bring it back home and put it in the bag. But can they build upon this now? Can they ensure they can take go all the way and take game two? Yeah, several times in that first hill, it didn't look very promising to be able to set up, rack up some significant time and potentially score that point. But somehow, some way, Quadrant just able to trade successfully out. The damage produced by the Quadrant members was just too much, but as I say, that Snipe Drone lane's a perfect shot. They've got a full setup for this tram position. And if Sika can pick up one on the SLG while he picks up this thrust, he can do so much damage with the Stalker. He doesn't get clear, but the grenade takes him down. And although he goes down, look at the chunk of time that Ascend has been able to put towards this second point. Snipe Drone respectful, playing expert there, front C, baiting and switching. Respectful knew the help was coming. He just had to stay alive on that pillar. Snipe drone came, and now rockets once more in the hands of an Ascend member. 
And what can Sneaker do with them as he opts to bring them back commando and play defense over on driveway with them? Battle rifle in hand here, but we're all tied up as Ascend will take that second hill, but that one was far too easy there, Wes. Yeah, hill one, it was a mosh pit. What felt like a very, very long hill. Hill two, Ascend got and kept for the entire stint. That's a beautiful job by Ascend to get a setup and hold it. That's what I'm talking about, Jersey, when I'm telling you that when Ascend get these setups, they can look so dominant. It's just a matter of will they be in those positions in order to kind of dictate that dominant story and already you're seeing a sin with tower control so we may be looking at a quick third point as well ascend really starting to dictate the pace then going up through the gears as chicken the l is back down legend with the bulldog trying to close the distance gets two shots but it won't be enough to secure the kill for his team perhaps this could be the start of the break of the setup respectful last man standing in tires but he's not standing for long put on his back by Shad and we will now see Quadrant put some score on the board but the amount of time already put down by Ascend they just need one clean break yeah no mistakes for Quadrant and unfortunately Nurex going down is going to give Ascend numbers advantage it is traded out by Shad but as it's traded out Shad gets taken down and typically this is what happens numbers advantages means we just trade efficiently and we'll be able to score these last few points Chick trying to deny those points but not enough manpower there to deny a sin from taking the 2-1 lead snipe drone then on the generator a couple of shots down of the commando will take that player down to half shields and that's going to be enough the damage done onto snipe drone for the bait and switch to come through what respectful and snipe drone can do Quadrant are well capable and have it in their locker also. Bulldog barking over towards the street, the side of the street, the cafe here. Hmm. And it was not going to mean a kill. Not going to mean too much damage. Quadrant have got the early slays here. And that is why we're starting to see them score. What does Chad do with these rockets? He tries to push, kind of gets caught into a long range battle. And that's exactly where you don't want to be on that downhill area with those rockets. It's so difficult to land one because of that slope. Because of it, he gets taken down. Fortunately for him, Murex with this shotgun, able to stay alive, continue racking points, and look at the chunk of time they've been able to build throughout this chaos. Much like the oddball game, it's back and forth. We're almost seeing the good and the bad from both these two teams that when they get control, they can really do the damage. The first hill, like Wes says, a mosh pit. Hill two, far easier for a stand to claim, and indeed three. But now we see Quadrant answer back. It's 2-2 here. The series is tied up. The game is all tied up. There's still many more plays to be made in this series. Absolutely. 2-2 two two is as close as it gets. Both teams showing you that they're very capable of taking this game. Three. And a triple kill from SLG with that stalker rifle could be just what Quadrant need in order to continue the momentum they built over these last couple of minutes and unfortunately SLG can't quite find the over he gives his life trying to combat a couple more players there and respectful he's going to award his team the first couple of points here in this fifth hill this fifth hill is the home of carnage and chaos and the stand are starting to score those points required chick in the respawn screen will quadrant start to slow things down and try and push accordingly together as a unit Plays again favor Quadrant, but only for a moment as Ascend start to hit the respawn screen in their drones. Respectful over towards tires will be the latest one to lose his life. Seeker comes off the respawn screen, just trying to desperately keep them out of the hill, but Rocket's in the hand of Quadrant now. Rocket's in the hands of Shad and Quadrant really dominating the Rocket control so far in the second half of this game. It's an easy double kill for Shad as he swaps it out for the Bulldog. Can't find the triple, but I mean, not a ton of points awarded so far, Jersey, but I do want to focus on the prioritization of setting up for this hill. Although it seems very chaotic for both these teams at this time, I love the idea of controlling Tram with the Stalker Rifle if you're able to. And that's been the prioritization from Ascend, and that's why I believe Ascend has gotten a few more points. Snipe Drone, watch him. As he goes into Tram, he's not really worried about the hill. He wants this top balcony position because this hill, it's susceptible from all angles of tram, you're able to shoot them out of the hill. You're able to pick up those easy kills, deny the objective from being done. And that's going to be the favorable setup for this bottom mid hill. Ascend showing you that they've already kind of caught onto that meta. 
And with the score all tied up, now all of a sudden, our eyes have to pay more and more attention to that shot clock currently sitting at 55. Every single time a member of opposite teams stand in that hill, the clock will stop, much like Oddball. We spoke about how Hill 1 was a mosh pit and how Hill 5 has proven to be even more so. Killing spree locked in for respectful, but unable to stand in the hill until this very moment. Members of Quadrant falling in like raindrops, but evaporating in the heat on streets. Can ascend, maintain control for these final moments. Because if they win this hill, they will well and truly win the game. Absolutely, just 35 seconds, and you know the mosh pit that the reset to back to P1 is going to be. So you really need to capitalize here if you're quadrant. You got to figure out a way to get a setup going, a couple of kills going your favor. But just like that, Sika switches the storyline on their head with the triple oh. kill as he finds the rockets relocates himself to try and find the elves shout with a great grenade but is it enough to get a send out of the hill sniped from comfortably sitting in the back left of this hill is going to be able to just inch that bar even closer and now quadrant the cliche it's back intact you need to play perfect taylor to win this one just 18 points maybe you get out of the hill and force this thing into an overtime situation because right now coming back and extending this game may be impossible it's back to the walls then Will Quadrant prioritize just playing Slayer here and play for that overtime? It looks as though the call has come. They want to win the game here and now. And is that Gamble is rolling? That oh guy my. is going to come back to bite them here with 12 seconds remaining. But can a member of Ascend get in? Three dead go Quadrant. Shad the last man standing, but they've got members in the hill and they will take their third, their third hill. 3-2 now the score and only 11 seconds to play with for Quadrant. And how long can you keep this pillar set up? Because it needs to be the entire time you're already starting to make a little bit of work onto this bar but unfortunately you got to play perfect because 11 seconds is all that's on the clock it's really the important thing to pay attention to as these closing moments happen cannot afford to step out of the hill even for a moment but three go down momentarily for quadrant and that's going to mean a stand can just play slayer and bait the hill they've all stepped outside they're playing slayer they've done it so successfully and that gamble the Quadrant played and not playing for the reset has come back to bite them as Ascend take the lead in the series 2-1. to one. Ascend do what it takes to get the job done. It was that fifth hill that decided game three and that might be the one that decides the series at the end of the day, Jersey. This is as close as it gets in King of the Hill on streets. It was beautiful setups at times from both teams, but Ascend looking like the stronger team when they had full control. But to me, Jersey, that fifth hill, everyone needs to start paying attention to how teams are playing that situation. If you treat it like a mosh pit and you just rush it off your spawn, you can very quickly lose the idea of what it means to set up for a hill that is very difficult to imagine a setup around. But that tram position that we saw us then prioritize, we saw Sika and Snipe Drum predominantly finding themselves towards that tram area. And because they had that control, they always had the opportunity to deny time from Quadrant and then they eventually were able to gain time their own. That game was at some pace throughout, Wes. But something we have to talk about, like you say, you touch upon that fifth hill and how successful Ascend were in the end. But although Quadrant looked really good, particularly in that third and fourth hill where they really started to find their form, there was... That second hill was so, so dominant for Ascend. Even the third? Was, the, even, exactly, even the third hill was really dominant. And although the fifth one went to distance, I think the questions have to be asked for Quadrant. You spoke about it briefly, but the, I don't even think the idea crossed their mind. We should just play for, the, play for the reset here and go again. They rolled that dice when really they had no right to. Yeah, I think that that's something that is going to be a growing pain for a lot of top teams, right? It's going to be when do we decide to give it up and set up for the next hill? Because some of these hills are much easily contested or much easier contested, I should say, than others, right? The one that's in tram, the one that's in the courtyard by PD, those two hills are very easy ones to set up and hold the entire time. They're very difficult hills to break, especially if you can't figure out a way to get a numbers advantage. So at what point do you decide to chalk one hill and rotate to the portion of the map that you know the the hill is going to go towards and give yourself an opportunity to regain a point 
and match whatever you just gave up, right? I think that that's a mature decision that's very difficult to make when you want to capitalize on every single moment of the game, but you're going to see veterans and you're going to see players learn from the mistakes that they're making throughout King of the Hill's existence. And you're going to start seeing teams prioritize the next hill much more so than trying to compete for the last seconds of a hill that's probably already going to go into the enemy's favor. But King of the Hill streets now in the books, Wes, our attention very quickly turns to CTF Bazaar and four quadrants. We have seen them play against Ascend now. Indeed, it was an Ascend with Shady, so a different roster and maybe a different question entirely. But we've seen them be very competitive on Bazaar, but we've also seen them get ran through. With how this series is shaken out so far, do you think we'll see a competitive game on Bazaar? Do you think it might just be one more win for Ascend in the books? When I think of Bizarre CTF, I think it's one of Ascend's best map mode combos. And that was with Shady, obviously. I think we're going to learn a lot about their play style with Respectful here on Bizarre. I do think it's an opportunity to stay in this series if you're Quadrant, and you better hope it is, right? If you want this series to go in Quadrant's favor, and you need it to go the distance at this point. So Bizarre CTF's the name of the game. Prioritization of Rockets and Overshield, I'm going to beat that horse every single day of the week because we saw how impactful rockets were for Xena that game. How many triple kills did we see Ascend capture because they were able to get those rockets underway? And with those triple kills, the space, the, the objective that you're able to play behind it, even in King of the Hill, it's obvious, but in CTF, especially on Bizarre, rockets trying to push into a base without overshield or rockets or against an overshield or a rocket player is near impossible. So you need to get those, you need to prioritize control of the middle of the map before control of the enemy base now ascend you want to step on the throats of quadrant here you want to make a statement by saying this put this series it's not as close as it looks because we won three to one and hopefully on the back of a bizarre ctf win that may not be as close as, as some of the other games but i think this could do wonders for Ascend's confidence as they find themselves in the grand finals and it can do wonders for quadrants confidence as well if they're able to take this series to a game five and show everyone how close they really are to this team if ascend win it here nobody will care about how close the games were the score will simply read 3-1 and when people read it they will think it was business as usual ascend back on top quadrant have it all to do with the bounce back and push this game to a game five because if they come back and have to fight ascend once more in grand finals It'll be Ascend this time that have the advantage of that bracket reset. There's a lot of Halo still left to be played in this tournament, but Ascend are starting to find the rhythm. Quadrant off to a good start, it seems, as Legend has secured those rockets, but that's a big kill by SLG as he reprioritizes his player front door. And I actually like this play by him as well. Unfortunately, he loses a couple of members and what looks like a great start for Quadrant may not be as strong of a push now that two members go down so slg is gonna have to get another one but these last two members for quadrant have done the job that's created the opening to potentially get a flag pull unfortunately it's a little bit too slow for my liking and with that ascend members have come off spawn and, and stopped that storyline from an early quadrant lead from happening respectful doing a fantastic job of taking care the Riff Raff back base. Triple kill for Chick though as he looks to turn his attentions towards Snipe Drone and screaming, where is the over or whatever it is in French to that effect. <laughs> Snipe Drone hiding under the tree house and Chick will be giving off those audio cues. Snipe Drone about to step up the stairs. An engagement now goes down. Both players down to half shields but recognizing that the damage has been done. Tra bait and switch here but respectful last man standing and Quadrant are in the ascendancy now. It's a big kill by Respectful although it's immediately traded out it allows legend to have a 1v1 situation there and because what legend wins that it's another failed push from quadrant so a great job by respectful to get that kill secured to allow legend the opportunity to deny a flag pull two chances then for quadrants to get a flag on the move they've been dominant so far but have been unable to affect the scoreboard to suggest that Will that come back to bite them once Ascend find their feet, as they so often do? Ten minutes on the clock, we will start to see some power-ups and power weapons be put to use very shortly as Nurex locks in one. Respectful is going to be the second victim. Double kill for him. Three members dead now. Seek it. The last player on his feet to be an influence here as he's over towards Bar Bridge. It's going to be a straight melee though. Somehow Seek has managed to not only get that kill on the SLG, 
but he's able to stay alive. Nurex will throw the flag out front base. This flag might already be dead in the water. Can Nurex stay alive is the question for me. He does get his shield back, and now it's going to be difficult for Snipedrone to know where he is. He gets that kill on the Snipedrone, and maybe another flag touch would be massive for Quadrant. He gets another kill, and Nurex has made the play that potentially could give Quadrant the early lead. Unfortunately, Respectful is going to take him down, but... With numbers in Quadrant's favor, once again, you got to think they're able to take down Respectful. They are. They get the touch. And that is a flag cap all on Yurik. The new guy on the roster has got 10, 2, and 3 to keep his team in this series to give his team an early lead in round four or in game four. And that's a beautiful start for the boys on the red side. Yurik then originally dropped for Shad has come back and shown exactly why he should not have been that player to lose his position in the first place as he tries to drive his team in towards game five slg with the that. grapple is throwing the flag front base that's going to be enough as well and as quick as the first flag went in they've doubled their lead and all of a sudden quadrant asking all sorts of questions of ascent it's the little things that matter and slg just grappling that wall to just stay alive to just buy a little bit more time to distract the player from ascend in his base from getting an easy quick kill and being able to refocus onto a second player allowed another member of quadrant to find the easy kill and to finally punch that second flag in small things like that the micro plays pay attention to them because they make a difference overshield about to pop now that has the chance the opportunity to play a massive part in the next stages of this game chick has punched it into his chest Will he make the same mistake? Yes, he will into three houses. Overshield is completely gone. Time and time again, players push the overshield into three house and they're met by either a plasma pistol or a back whack. There's so much to clear inside there. We've time and time again, we've screamed for them to enter bar, but instead, Chick will enter. And although he's lost his overshield, they've already done enough damage to ascend defense. This is the quadrant you know and love. Look at that. Chick with 13, Yuris with 13, just absolutely popping off a piece. Seven minutes left in the game. And Shad doing everything he can before getting taken down. Respectful. Finally gets that kill, but can't quite hop the return. And quadrant just being such a nuisance. Somehow, some way, Nurix is behind him once again. Grapple used by SLG. Oh my god, it's beautiful. He seems to be spawning with it at the moment. Although he's the last man standing, his team will spawn up in time to help him play defense if required. 3-0 now the score. As Quadrant really cranked the pressure onto a stand and we might be heading to a game five quicker than we thought. I've never seen a comeback on Bizarre of three caps or more, so I'd have to think a game five is definitely in store for the fans here in the EU scene. Legend trying to deny that storyline though. A counter cap would be a massive step in the right direction to limit this to just two still plenty of time on the clock but if you're a legend and you're getting shot here you got to stay alive and turn the corner your teammates are with you so it is going to be a counter cap going into sin's favor and we know how strong of a map mode combo this has been for them throughout the past and maybe just maybe we will see a comeback of the magnitude of three caps but it's going to come on the back of a massive step up from everyone on a sin right now because three of them they're all stuck at seven kills and if you're taking a look at the other side it's an easy way to transition caps into stats with 16 and 14 still for the quadrant leads wes has never seen a team come back from a 3-0 deficit on ctf bizarre but it's a first time for everything and they're respectful of looking to punch a hole and the ascend defense now as they start to turtle up just a touch recognizing the power shift oh my. dynamic now as respectful locks in two for his team turns his attention towards back base here recognizing yurix to sit back looking for a scratch and looks though yurix comes out on top of that picker engagement yeah i hate that play by respectfully you need to figure out a way to get that kill without trading maybe it comes on the back of a little bit of help but unfortunately respectful knows that he wants to be aggressive he wants to apply pressure and Sometimes that comes back to bite you. He loses his life there, but the flag is still on the move. And Respectful does have 17 kills to his name, so he is doing a lot of things right to keep his team in this one. Unfortunately, that flag, it gets denied from leaving the bar. And the bouncers from Quadrant, they get the return. The heavies in the bar send the flag home. They're staying not tonight. As Jurex now enters the double doors, Sizzlestick goes down. That will tag up that player sitting there in the corner. 
He's not long for the world, but Sniper Drone drops down onto double doors, puts a melee into the spine. And ensure his number advantage won't be too affected now. Seeker gets another trade. But in the grand scheme of things, all the slays, as long as this time goes on, time is well and truly on Quadrant's side here, but an overextender in the face and shape of Snipe Drone, and indeed Respectful have already gone through, they're going to have to slay on the way home. Yeah, Quadrant had the intention of capping a fourth flag as well, they've got it on the move, and two of these members are under heavy pressure. Over towards the rocket side of the map, look at that, Nerex finds himself another double, and Overshield's going to go into the hands of Quadrant as well, and this is going to be a very difficult situation for the last two members of Ascend to try and deal with. Last two members in it. One in lockers, one in bar. Plasma okay. pistol again evaporates the overshield, but it's one final member ascend left in the treehouse up against Shad. Not only is he trying to play return, not only is he trying to defend, but he's trying to make sure that the other flag stays alive. He didn't get a touch. He did not get a touch, but, oh! and the flag will get sent home. And all of a sudden, ascend have another touch on their flag with three minutes and 30 on the clock. They gotta get the kills though. Sika finds the first, and that's gonna be a massive one. Can Sika find two? Oh. Unfortunately, Nerex with the thrust gets the better of him, but three go down for Quadrant. Ascend do get another touch on this flag, so it's a 2v1 situation. Grapple is up, rockets are coming up, and now all of a sudden, three minutes on the clock, Ascend down one. It was 3 0 with six minutes on the clock. It's 3 2 with three minutes on the clock, and all of a sudden, what looked to be a Quadrant win all day. Are they about to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory? Legend goes down, but he makes sure he takes SLG along for, with him for the ride. And now we see rockets in the hands of Snipe Drone and the grapple hook. All right, as Snipe Drone gets into the bar, can Sika get this kill in the corner and stay alive? It's going to be two dead for Quadrant. And now all of a sudden, Snipe Drone's in your base with grapple. The flag's being pulled. What was once a 3 0 lead is now diminished to just a one cap lead. And a lot of pressure from us then. Look at them. All the boys are in the treehouse today. They get a flag pull as well. Get it to the middle of the map. And they're going to need one round of slays to tie this one up. Ascend, they're holding a pack. Nurex gets a massive kill on the seek. And that will open up the possibility then of keeping this flag from getting punched in for Ascend and tying up the game. But Snipe Drone locks another kill along with Respectful. Flag down. On the bar, two members going to get a touch now. Snipe Drone will be the first one to get there. Has he rounded the corner? No, he hasn't. But Seek is on hand instead. A 3-0 lead has now been completely negated. 3-3, we're all tied up. I told you I'd never seen it before, and it was the first time for everything's jersey. We've seen it now, 3-3. Unfortunately, Snipe Drone, he opted to go for the flag instead of wait for that overshield. So now, Aspen's going to have to deal with the potential overshield flag run here. The overshield is going to be dwindling down, but the flag is on the move. Shad gets it out to the bottom middle. Where the slay is coming through, three members of Quadrant are momentarily dead, and this return, you can guarantee it's coming on the side of Aspen. Now, what do they do with map control? Flag have Quadrant now been found guilty of complacency? They left the door wide open for Aspen to come in and grab three unresponsive caps and all of a sudden the pendulum swings back towards the purple side of this series now confidence must be shot to pieces now for quadrant after doing all the hard work early game ascend find a way to rally back somehow some way it's been showing you they have what it takes to create an unbelievable comeback. It's on the back of Respectful 26, 13, and 18. Once again, most kills, most assists. First team just giving you stellar performances multiple times today. And when his team wants to close the series, it's giving you yet again. But and I have to do with some wonder still as Quadrant is in their base, pulling the flag, and have a significant amount of control of their base as well. So they're going to have a very strong opportunity unfortunately they lose two and with that you got to think that bike's being returned sniper drone's going to flush out slg into his own base and now they just have shad to deal with we're going to overtime here folks we didn't think it possible clutch had never seen it he's seen it now in pro series six in the winners finals ascend have answered back after being down 3-0 and now we head into a clean break, a fresh start for both these teams. Confidence has to be well and truly high in the Ascend camp here, Wes.
You gotta be. I mean, momentum is all in your favor. The Over one thing here. that you have to start thinking about is this break. How do you have a strong break? Because last time it was all quadrant. Unfortunately, you're gonna get an opportunity to probably collect yourself and talk about it because we lost a player from the lobby. And that's gonna slow things down a little bit. Kristen, they're gonna be able to recap. They're gonna be able to say, hey, what happened at the, la the start of last game that maybe we can change up. So look for both these starting strats from both these two teams to look a little bit different because Squadron, if you're on that side, you know, hey, we got the better of them with our starting strat last time. It's probably not gonna work twice in a row. We wanna change maybe something up be a little bit less predictable this time around. So very important how these two teams start this overtime because it's next cap wins, obviously. And if you're Quadrant, you're looking to push the game five. You need to get there. If you're a Sting, you did the dirty work to get all the way back from the 3-0 deficit, tie this one up. And you want to close the door on this one before it goes to a game five slayer because the saying goes, anybody can win the game five slayer. And there's the tail of the tape after the first game. But Wes, you speak about how this break might be a help and a hindrance, a help for a stand and a hindrance for Quadrant after the initial start went so heavily in favor of Quadrant. But with the way the back end of that game and how Ascend were dominant, absolutely dominant, this break has to help Quadrant a little bit just to cool off, regain, and come back stronger because we've seen Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from Quadrant so good in the first half but so, so poor in the second half. They really handed the keys of the game over to a stand and they got, sat in that driver's seat and took over. Yeah, to me, there's two mindsets you can kind of fall into if you're on the side of Quadrant. You're either like forced to almost linger on, on the fact that you should be looking at a game five right now and, and that you just let this comeback happen and to sit on that for a little bit of time, that that's gotta be a disgruntled feeling. You're talking about leadership. You're talking about an IGL. You're talking about veteranship. How are these guys communicating throughout this dead period of time? We're going to learn a lot about the squadron roster to see how they come out here early in overtime. And if their guns are blazing, if they've got their restructure and, and if they're feeling comfortable or if they're kind of rattled by the, the fact that they've allowed this comeback to find themselves in this situation where they are in overtime. Not a bad pickup for online warriors. If you're gonna lose respectful, you can get another top player in Shady. Yeah, I think everybody should have been looking to try and pick up Shady. He's the hot commodity that you know you need on your team if you want to try and take down the top dogs. He is a veteran at this point. He's had so much success with that it's been roster. Not only that, but he knows everything about them. He can play at the highest level. So that's a massive pickup for online warriors. If you're gonna be if you're gonna be forced to make a team change and find a replacement i think that that's the best case scenario for those guys i'm actually pretty shocked that nobody else in front of those guys ended up picking them up but we're already into overtime look at that quadrant four dead they've got a great start once again and with that four dead can they transition this into an early cap and end this one before it gets messy the quadrant have taken map control but it's then they're slowing this push down to a crawl and ensuring the overshield will not have the desired effect as it's completely obliterated now after those spike grenades from Respectful sitting over towards the front doors. And two members of Quadrant try to get touch tight to move the flag, but unfortunately, that initial push from that Quadrant, that initial pressure they have applied, has now amounted to nothing. And like we've seen before, they put a lot of good things together, but are unable to connect the dots at times. we already seen Respectful and Co. go down 0 and 3, and Ascend prove they have the stones, the Brandon stones here, to bounce back if required. But now all of a sudden the stand are starting to apply the very same pressure. Nurex though, like he was time and time again, behind the enemy line, sitting in the enemy bar. This player, snipe drone, completely unaware of his position. Legend in a 1v1 with Nurex, but Legend comes out on top and now two dead apiece. Flag on the move though, respectful. Throws it out front base, but only a distraction. Yeah, both flags on the move. For now, SLG's getting a pull of his own and he's already gonna be continuing that run towards this bottom shotgun and this is gonna give him so much cover as he's made it here successfully. They still have to take care of Respectful who should be in their bar above this flag carrier. So we wanna see if they're able to take him down. Respectful still in the kill feed. If he gets taken down, nobody from oh. Ascend's even close in quadrant actually just gets an easy flag cap. No one from Ascend in a position to even stagger that flag run and that is so impressive from quadrant to be able to display that level of strategy a great job by slg to choose that route and because of that jersey we now have a game five on our hands wes i was i was waiting for a gun to get fired into slg <laughs> yeah, I, I fully anticipated it was going to be some sort of gunfight there but 
Nothing happened. I thought Respect was still alive in the bar, but no, nothing happens. The flag goes in. Okay, we're going to a game five, it looks like. I was definitely expecting somebody to something, anything. shoot SLG throughout that flag run, someone to like stagger it, like I was saying, but like nothing was happening in the kill feed and somehow, some way, SLG just was able to cap that one. Very interesting ending. I'd have to see everybody's <laughs> points of views or I'd have to rewatch it, but uh, best case scenario for us as Halo fans is we get a game five on our hands, quadrant able to close it out. So all the the comeback still hasn't happened on Bizarre. Yes, they, they were able to tie it up, but still that was close, but no cigar on uh, a three cap comeback for Bizarre, I would say. And somehow, some way, Quadrant get the job done, but I think as we're taking a look at the highlights jersey, something that we really need to prioritize focus on is how strong of a game board the Murex had. Yep. Yep. Just so impressed with his kills, so impressed with his consistency throughout it. And Murex not really that main slayer very often for this quadrant team. I mean, he's surrounded by a ton of talent, but for Murex to be leading the lobby in kills, I mean, that's got to give quadrant a lot of confidence with their new pickup. And you spoke about as we loaded into the game was how important the starting the starting strap was going to be for Quadrant and indeed Ascend and how every single game we've gone into, Quadrant have had gotten the better of it in that regards. And we've seen that once more. Quadrant got all the goodies and although they didn't cap the flag first time of asking, they got it. The job done second time as we see SNLG do his best Ric Flair impression strutting into the final flag cap. But now all of a sudden we see a game five and all the things, all the praise we were heaping on the stand, all of a sudden Quadrant are, going, Quadrant are saying, we're still here, lads. We're still making a game of this. Yeah, Quadrant are here to play. And remember, game two was heavily in their favor. They got off to yes. an early 9-2 lead and never looked back. It was really a never close game two. And if that's indicative of, of how they are going to play players or how they're going to be able to perform here in game five, Quadrant are very confident going into this game five, especially with how strong that overtime round looks. So what looks like a completely deflated team at the end of regulation there in game four, after having a 3-0, we just dissipate right in front of them for them to come out to punch a spin right in the teeth to get this series to a game five. That's, at, that's what everybody wants to see is these two, how close this quadrant to beating a sin. What is respectful? Give us sin that maybe Shady didn't. And right now we're going to learn a lot about these two for the future. Every single game in this series has been close with the exception of the Slayer. And now we head into game five Slayer on Street, which has been a proven ground for Ascend time and time again. But will Quadrant have the answer to the questions that are posed? The opening starts here. Have favorite Ascend and Rocket Launcher in the hand now. That's going to secure the third kill for Ascend 3-1 after the opening engagements. Street Slayer is a very strong game type in the past for Ascend. They're going to want this one more than ever to make a statement that they are still the kings of the EU scene for now. Legend trying to stay alive here. Actually relocates him with this Bulldog Shotgun in this position. He can do so much damage, but unfortunately it snipped out. And the pre-grenade from Shad's going to remove that shotgun from his hand. And that's a beautiful job by Shad. But unfortunately, nobody else on Quadrant with a kill so far in this game. It's a 9-3 lead for a stand. Worst possible start for Quadrant in this game. Five Slayer. 10 kills to four. Stalker rifle in the hands of Snipe Drone. That can do so much damage, but he drops down. But unfortunately, it's only going to be to his death. Chick slides out front base, and that's going to mean he also pays the price and goes over towards the boatman. And down the river sticks, he flies. 13 kills to six then. Both members back to a full complement of players, and 4v4 on the map momentarily is legend. Gonna be the first one to get picked during this round of slays. Seven kills then, the difference between these two teams. An over a rocket, excuse me, gonna pop up another 25 seconds to be another influence and Quadrant need to get their hands on that as well as that double kill locked in for the team. What in the world did Shad just do back tower to get those two kills to stay alive and find a third? That was unbelievable by Shad to get his team right back in this now only down four. Bulldog in the back pocket, spike grenades doing the damage as well. Double kill, booked in for Chick. Rockets though is gonna be the next point to call. We're seeing both these players back down, wait for the teammates. Sika spawns up towards Cafe, stock rifle, and indeed a grenade thrown towards the benches, but there's nobody waiting for the bus this time. Will not do the damage required. Rocket still ready to be picked up. They're begging to be put in, coach. Respectful, backs down the player with the stock rifle. Chick has to respect the gun skill. 
Spine Tron will drop down. Has no idea there's a Bulldog player there, but it does not matter. Two kills go in their favor. And that will well and truly most certainly mean Rockets do too. This is all of the ingredients and all the cookies that Ascend need. And where do these Rockets go? They're in stick his hands. He's still got both to work with. It's a five kill game. So Quadrant have done a great job to weather the storm, but unfortunately it's still raining. Rockets, Asika finds a double, extends the lead to seven. Quadrant show signs of life to close the gap, but now back to exactly where they started before those round of slays came. And Yurix and Shad have hit the respawn screen again. Could potentially be three dead, only for SLG to round that corner before that final shot did connect. An eight kill game here as we very quickly approach the halfway point. And we've just gotten there now. A game well and truly flowing towards the stand here. What can Quadrant do to bounce back? Got to figure out a way to gain map control. Multiple members are towards the arcade. It's a solo push. There. On the side of a send and... Good job by Shad to pick up that one, but still work to do. Eight kills and look how aggressive they want to be. Great job by them to find a few and flip the map potentially on a send, but unfortunately... Trades across the board are not going to benefit them at this point. Seven kills is still manageable, though, Jersey, and this next set of rockets could be the win condition for Quadrant. This next wave of slays has to be decisive, and it has to go the way of Quadrant. They need these rockets. We can see Snipe Drone down bottom middle looking to get close to them. Legend. Has he been successful? As Legend wins another gun fight in there, Snipe Drone on the rockets, fires one towards the bottom stairs. That's going to be another kill for dead yeah. momentarily. And when Snipe Drone <laughs> drops his weapon, shoots you with the battle rifle and adds insult to injury. The damage has been done here. Quadrant are well and truly on the ropes in game five. The drop shot with rockets, not something you usually see, Jersey, and that is the only reason he was really able to get that kill. He allowed the ready time for his BR. To just be so quick there, picks up that kill, immediately picks the rocket back up, and that was beautiful execution by the button glitch. Nine kills then. Not insurmountable by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a long, hard road back with very little concrete, very little traction here for the Quadrant race car as Yurix backs down. Tower is going to make it a really difficult kill. Somehow comes out on top as Legend. It's found wanting, but respectful will trade it out. A 10 kill game here. Quadrant need clean kills and they need them now. You got to figure out a way to gain some power. And unfortunately, ever since that second set of rockets was coming up, it's been all a stint. And control of the shotguns and control of the stalkers, the, the rockets more importantly. And with that, it's been so difficult to try and compete against some of these battles and great oh. job by SLG. But unfortunately, just trades are not going to get the job done at this point. 40 to 30. The deficit, 11 kills and eight required for a send to book their ticket to grand finals and have the insurance policy. Time again, this time of a bracket reset. And as Quadrant, they sat in the winner's seat for a week, but a send didn't like the look of it, didn't like how it sat in their eyes. And they're hoping already that Quadrant haven't put a dent in the seat because they look to sit right back on top of that throne. But now all of a sudden a six killed game. Chick with rockets as well. This is not out of the question, not out of the realm as a possibility. First rocket goes in but doesn't find a home, does not connect. A six kill game now for a send to lock in game five. And it's going to come. We don't have to wait too long. Game five. Victory for Ascend. They win 3-2 in the end. They're back in the grand finals for the winner's side. Showing that last week was just a misstep. A once-off. And it will not happen again. They're back on top and they're heading into the grand finals.
I think we might have lost clutch for the moment. I can hear him, but maybe you guys can't, which, which is okay. I would attempt to do a Dan Gaskin accent, but in actual fact, I won't because I just absolutely butcher it and end up insulting Wes. And he's a much bigger man than I. He would just choke slam me. I'm not trying to get involved in that. So what we can say is a send of book their ticket to grand finals. 3-2 in the end. Quadrant gave as good as it got. It's not out of the realm as a possibility that when these teams meet again next week, or if indeed it happens today, Quadrant could get the job done if game times go their way. But one thing we can say with all certainty is a standard back on top. Game one didn't go their way. Game two was much better from them. But all we can mm -hmm. say here is Quadrant have a road back now as they drop down to the lower side to face against Navi. Those two teams have not played against each other for quite some time. And maybe it's a test that Navi need now more than ever. As we see a little 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 Halo logo for Wes where he once stood. What I'm I will here. do is I'll bring back I'll bring back Lottie and Gaskin instead as Wes cries out in the background, but I'm not even sure if anybody else can hear him. <laughs> but Wes is back. But there is the score in the end, 50 to 42. What a performance it was. Game five, and indeed for Snipe Drone going 14 and 6. Clinical at times. As the highlights roll, the possibility that Quadrant had in the end with those rockets, four members spawning up in PD, but the rocket just could not connect and find a home. But I'll bring Lottie and Dan back in. What a series that was. We got another game five. Incredible series. Hopefully everybody at home can uh, can hear me and my mic is on. Uh, just double check. It is on. I've been told it's on. Hello, everybody. Uh, Shaz, fantastic stuff, mate. Going through those highlights there. I think that's the most I've heard you talk in. Uh, uh, no, it's real painful, actually. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was painful for us as well. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, no, if we hide, he has to keep talking. <laughs> 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 Gone. Um, I, I tell you what, though, what an incredible series that was. I'm really glad we got to go to game five. Uh, and I got to say, you know, Gaskin, watching that one, I think having the victory there on the side of the I think if there was any pressure on their shoulders based on what happened last week to them, I think that pressure has totally been lifted, especially taking down Quadrant, obviously Quadrant winning last week. Um, I, I think they're going to be really, really happy with how they played that. I think on the other side for Quadrant, I think they're going to be kicking themselves here. I think they're going to be really, really disappointed with how that went because they did have some really strong openings in some of these games. And despite that, weren't quite able to, I think, clutch up in certain areas uh, where Ascent managed to kind of take the map and turn things around. So how, how did you feel like Quadrant played? 